Good morning, folks. Today we've got updates on the Earth's interior, space weather preconditioning, physics violations, and an explanation of the importance of Earth's rotation glitches. We are starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun bring action at the departing southern quadrant, the dark coronal holes, the thin snake-like plasma filaments, and the bright active region. The active region is lacking large sunspots and the production of flares, but the solar wind streams remain worked by the coronal holes. Density rise and then a plasma speed increase this morning, minor stream only, producing minor geomagnetic effects. Looking at this large plasma filament snaking between the coronal hole and the bright active region, it has remained stable thus far, but will continue monitoring it as it's facing Earth today, and its cousin just left the party out ahead of it. These eruptions of filaments can be as powerful as CMEs from solar flares, except there's no pre-eruption flare to warn you. You have to have eyes open. Let's come to the Global Climate Report for January, and I'm going to toggle between the whited out propaganda map and the full color one that shows we had equal above and below average temperature zones last month. On the one whited out, some blue areas are even turned red, so it appears we've warmed more than we actually have. Coming back to space weather momentarily, Confirmation of the consecutive impact risk enhancement. Having a strong CME deliver energetic particle flux to Earth preconditions the solar wind, interplanetary magnetic field, and geospace to take a larger impact from a subsequent eruption, bringing the increased risk of radiation storms and geomagnetically induced blackouts. Let's stop at Swirlons next. They have noticed this with animal behavior, birds to human crowds, but now for the first time we find mysterious motion in particles matching exactly. It was thought that consciousness is what deviated the living creature's patterns from the second law of thermodynamics. So what does it mean if the particles individually do it too? Is the mystery even larger? Is every particle conscious? More questions than answers here. Now we go inside Earth and remind everyone that this nonsense they still teach in school is now years past its expiration date. The large low shear velocity provinces, the LLSVPs, are the internal skeleton of our planet, the foundational structure from the core all the way out to the hot spots up through the mantle and to the crust. And that's the topic of today's new paper on the subject, finding that indeed, almost every hot spot on Earth ties back into the core through these large structures inside the Earth. Interestingly, one of the ones they found to not be connected is Yellowstone, which actually furthers the evidence that it's broken now, unable to hold pressure inside, and instead just releases that pressure as geysers, quakes, and geothermal releases that scare people on the internet into thinking it's going to erupt again. Moving on to the length of a day. Article here on the intraseasonal variation of Earth's rotation. These are the expected cycles, and by the way, no, I don't like their atmospheric and ocean current explanation for a dozens of miles thick crust having glitches. But beyond the expected cycle shifts in the length of a day, both geomagnetic jerks and solar storm interaction with the geomagnetic field create the anomalous glitches. Now that's our concern as the field is fading now, and so we have to come back to yesterday's top story. Top right, that's the 4.11 millisecond record speed day predicted, and yesterday we had said that's gotta be an error. It seems that was correct. They do seem to change this every day, but even still, that was beyond reasonable yesterday. The updated number today still shows an expected broken record again this year in terms of fastest day, and that yearly difference of 58.27 milliseconds fast is actually higher than it was yesterday, so error is fixed, but we are still speeding up. And no, you will never notice millisecond changes to the rotation, but Earth's crust, that's held in place by a delicate thermoelectrically driven friction. Otherwise, the plates would knock about like plywood on a windy lake. That low velocity zone crust mantle boundary, that is what's going to notice the change, especially when it takes the major induction from the 12,000 year solar cycle flash. But of course, that's another story we've covered other days and you can learn more about it at suspiciousobservers.org. You can also learn about it at our disaster playlist right here on YouTube. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.